show is the funniest show on television. I never miss it. I think he's the best looking man on the face of the earth. When he isn't on television, life simply isn't worth living. <laughs> My dear, it's only me, Cuddly Ken. I know I look large alive. What? Oh, very kind of you, but it'd never work. I suggest you pick on somebody your own size. Anyway, let's watch the show now, shall we? I'll watch it with you. Yes, I'll be careful where I sit. Now go back to your seat and behave yourself. <laughs> What's the matter with you? You all right? The gentleman will take my arm. Okay. Good afternoon. Welcome to South African Airlines Flight 764 to Johannesburg. I'm so pretty, I'm so pretty, I'm so pretty and witty and gay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Humble little Guinness chop. <laughs> what can I get you? Excited? Could I see a male assistant, please? <laughs> okay, Limeys. Now hear this. I'm here today to talk to you about freedom. Freedom of choice. Freedom of speech, freedom for every man, woman, and child in the world to live the great American dream, whether they like it or not. <laughs> freedom is what it's all about. I was talking to a little blue-eyed all-American boy the other day, just one of the millions of blue-eyed all-American boys who could one day grow up to be president of the good old U.S. of A. Yes, that's what freedom's all about. Talking to little boys Anytime you want to. <laughs> anyway, this kid, who was stroking his little puppy at the time, looked up to me and said, General, you're standing on my dog. <laughs> and I knew what that boy was trying to say. The whole world is standing on somebody's dog. <laughs> what we want is more real freedom. Freedom to bark. Freedom to run. Freedom to pee on trees. Freedom to dig in the dirt and chase bones. Yes, there's too many pink old fag tummy subversives standing on too many dogs, and we should round them up, put them in a field, and bomb the Yes? Um, I wonder if you can help me. I'm in a desperate hurry. I work on a very tight schedule, and my watch seems to be bust. I'm just wondering if you could fix it, because I really work to time oh, a lot. I'm sorry, Sonny, I don't fix watches. Oh, you just sell watches? Well, look, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll, I'll take a cheap watch, because I can't work without a watch. I work on a tight schedule. No, 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 you see, I don't sell watches either. What do you mean you don't sell watches? You've got watches and clocks all over the place. If you don't fix or sell watches, what do you do? Well, I doctor cats. <laughs> Dr. Katz, what the hell have you got all the watches and clocks in the window for? Well, what would you put in the window? <laughs> you mustn't do this. Please don't jump. It's not going to solve anything. Yes, it is. I've had enough. My mind's made up. Oh, well, suit yourself, but it won't solve anything. I should have done this long ago. But it won't help. Yes, it will. Goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> I told you it wouldn't solve anything. <laughs>
greatest sketch you ever saw in your life. I thought I was particularly good in that, and so was what's his name. Now, how would you? She doesn't know this is happening. How would you like to be a mega star, an overnight sensation? What? She says she's got a lot to do tomorrow. <laughs> Just introduce the next item. It's all very easy. See the words are on that machine over there in front of the camera. I use it all the time. <laughs> Have I shattered your illusions of me as a perfect human being? <laughs> Right, read, read that, go on. Go on. And now the next item, you're going to love it. Love it! Come on, get some guts into that! Love it! <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the world's greatest escapologist, or escape artist, those of you watching in black and white. Good evening, Damon und Herrens. I am the great Escapo, and this is my beautiful assistant, Ingeborg. You can see, I am already inside the straight jacket and the chains surround my body, which Ingeborg is currently, at this moment in time, padlocking. After which, she will place me in the concrete mixer, where I will be ground into tiny fragments. After which, she will pour me into this meat mincing thing, where I will be totally minced into mince. After which, she will pour me into the liquidizer, where I will be totally liquidized. After which, she will pour the liquid me into this wine glass. Uh, uh, uh. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I am now in the concrete mixer, switch on in the bag. Oh, 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 it's quite nice in here, really. Oh, not much pain at all. And now, the bucket will come out, the special sequin bucket, into which I am about to be poured. Okay, in the bag, now! <laughs> I've broken my contact lens. Good boy, thank you, Oh, over to the ninja. Okay. In the ninja! Thank you, Ingeborg! Oh, yeah, it's a bully box. Oh, I missed out my foot. Oh, never mind. Okay, Ingu, let's get out. Oh, no, I am totally liquid. Pour me into the wine glass, please. Thank you. Oh. Clumsy woman. <laughs> okay, now, drink me up! <laughs> Donko, where am I? <laughs> oh. Oh. Ah! It's a shine one! Oh my god! You son of a bitch! Stay tuned for more music and madness with you two and Kenny Everett. USA Movie serves up a double love match. First, Keith Carroll. Welcome back to Night Flight and an extra special Kenny Everett show. Thanks to tonight's musical guests, you two. Can I help you, sir? Ah, uh, yes. I'd like, um... A pound of sprouts, please. Pardon? A pound of sprouts. Have you got those nice little ones? You know, little, nice little tasty teeny ones? And, uh, and carrots, please. Excuse me, sir. This is a sex shop. Appliances, marital aids, that sort of thing. Yes, carrots. <laughs> and a nice cos lettuce. Now, look, you, you don't understand, sir. This is a sex shop. What you see is what we sell. Now, if you'd like any of these appliances, I'd be more than happy to serve you. Any French beans? No, we don't have any French beans. We don't have any cabbages, no bananas, no broccoli spears, no apples, no peaches, no pears, no plums. We sell aids and appliances to enrich your sex life. 
eight or appliance you want and I'll sell it to you. I'll even give you a discount. Choose one. I'll wrap it up. You'll buy it. You'll go. Now, what do you want? Aubergines. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, that's it. That's it. Will you tell me what you want and I'll get them for you. <laughs> Vegetable squad. <laughs> Good morning. Morning. This is a stick-up. Give me all your money. But I haven't got any money. That's why I came here in the first place. That's OK. I'll take a check. Oh. <laughs> oh, but I'm not talking about both at all. It's a wrap. Make it up as you go along So nobody knows if you're doing it wrong You can chuck in a word like circumcision Cos we ain't going in for your revision It's a wrap! the age of the casting couch was over. <laughs> no, no, I think it's me. I think it's me, yes. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you know what this picture's about, do you? Well, no, actually. My agent just said to come along. Oh, look, we're making a horror movie here, and I, I don't think... You're quite right for it, I'm afraid. Oh, no, horror's my speciality. My big thing is frightening. Yeah. <laughs> Moya. Mr. Moya, look here, this is a film with special effects. Uh, there'll be a lot of frightening things going on here. What we really want is some bizarre people. <coughs> Frankly, I don't know why your agent sent you here. Well, there is one frightening thing I do. Oh, what's that? My head blows up. Mm, it's very effective. Do you want to see it? Oh, yeah, yes, I would. Okay, now? Yes, now. Right. time I've done it and I, I didn't like it much. <laughs>
Looks like you got me this time. What do you want? I want to make a deposit. thousand <laughs> pounds. One up to me, I think. Thank you. What a great sketch. How do we keep it up? And who cares? This next sketch, as you can see, takes place in a bedroom. It's all about a honeymoon couple on their wedding night, and they're already having matrital pneumonial problems. <laughs> he suspects that she is having an affair, and she suspects that he suspects. So she's using the clever ploy of hiding under the sheets in an effort to avoid a confrontation. I, of course, am playing the part of the husband. And the part of the beautiful buxom young lady under the sheets will be played by our studio audience. <laughs> It's going to be great. <laughs> I just don't understand. This is our wedding night. How can you do this to me? Here I am in an expensive hotel with my lovely young bride, and she's hiding under the sheets. Will you please come out of there? No! What do you mean, no? It's just not good enough. What are you doing under there? Nothing! Oh, I see. It's just that you don't want to see me. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Aha. So my suspicions were correct. There is somebody else. Oh, my oh yes, there is. Admit it. Oh, my I knew it. Who is it? The band of the Coldstream Guards? Where are they? In the a great sketch and the audience really loved it didn't you audience yes! unfortunately there were a couple I told them to actually kill him <laughs> oh Michael you're such a thicko <laughs> in the nicest possible way <laughs> and you're right I did just finish a picture with Donny Osmond did you know he had a glass eye neither did I but it came out during the course of the conversation <laughs> I mean I knew about the teeth they bit me once, and he wasn't even there. <laughs> but I love those old stars, don't you? He's a Mormon, you know. They have all those wives. I'm not into polygamy myself. I tried it 30 or 40 times, didn't like it. <laughs> I'm a one-man woman. Otherwise, it's too crowded, don't you think? <laughs> anyway, let's talk about my new picture. It's a remake. A lot of that going on nowadays. Nobody's happy just making it once anymore. They gotta make it again and again. <laughs> but who am I to complain? <laughs> We're doing an underwater version of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. It's called Wet Hump. <laughs> I kind of love it. I play Esmeralda, the beautiful gypsy girl. And there's this scene where I meet Quasimodo and he really rings my bell. <laughs> He's got the biggest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> and it's on his back. <laughs> Not much of a looker, but a great dancer, know what I mean? Anyway, he looks into my crystal ball, and I look into his. 
and suddenly there's this angry mob with flaming torches marching down the street yelling, we want a hump, we want a hump. <laughs> Asimoto makes a break for it and gets away, but they grab me because they think he's hiding under my dress and they tear all my clothes off, tie me to a stake and start doing terrible Parisian things to me. And I'm screaming, please, please leave me alone. I'm only a poor gypsy virgin. <laughs> and suddenly I'm not. <laughs> then I'm underwater with Quasi again, and we go into this number. Oh, I forgot to tell you, it's a musical. Anyway, all the bells are ringing, and the song is called Ringing in the Sane. And while we're doing that, suddenly Quasimodo's eyes fill up with tears. You see, his hump's exploding due to the pressure. Oh, but I'm telling you the plot, you silly old thing. Go and see the movie. You'll love it. It's all done in the best possible time. Well, that's the end of the show. And what a great show it was. I think it'll go down in the annals of television history as one of the funniest shows ever recorded on videotape. Okay, we had a few problems at the beginning. One or two sketches were sensational on everybody else's terms, but not quite up to our high standards. And what can I say about the audience? Weren't they great? To simply say, I love them, is not enough. Strangers when we met half an hour ago, and now deeply involved and filled with mutual respect. Me working for them, and they hanging on my every word. Wasn't it Michael Heseltine who said, let them eat cake? television show. Do we, do we know him? No. <laughs> what kind of a show uh, is it? Wacky. Wacky. That's, that's in Hawaii, isn't it? Oh, that's Honolulu. Oh, I like her. True. <laughs> Dino D. Horrendous Productions, in association with the BBC. The station that brought you trawler fishing can be fun. All you need to know about pins and hang gliding in a chest of drawers presents... Uh, what's his name? Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Kenny. Kenny something. The Kenny something television show. Welcome to the show. What a great show it's going to be. But before it gets too great to bear, let me show you this. Last time I was in America, I ripped this out of a magazine. I thought, I must show this to the viewers. It's a real advert. A real advert. It's for a dentist in Palm Springs. Look at him. I mean, it reeks of America. Look, tan lips. Ooh. It says here, the mouth enjoys a special and unique status in human anatomy. It's your primary contact for the expression of love and affection. It's a mechanical wonder, a barometer of emotions, and a framework for the single most effective form of communication since the beginning of time, the smile. <laughs> At the bottom it says, if you're worried about going under, don't worry, we've got nitrous oxide, <laughs> intravenous sedation, and general anesthesia. The Palm Springs Dental Science Center. Look it up when you go, it's real. 
What will they think of advertising next, I wonder? Hi, I'm Jeff. I'm a lawyer. <laughs> Thinking about killing someone? <laughs> afraid of the consequences? Well, your troubles are over. Let my record speak for itself. 45 murder cases. 45 acquittals. You know it makes sense. Pull that trigger and give me a call. <laughs> Excuse me, duty calls. I'm Jeff. Try me. <laughs> okay, I'll kiss our puke, and anyone who says Punk's dead will be. <laughs> that has the joke. Geezer's buying insurance for his car. Says, I want it covered for theft. Insurance man says, you can't have just theft. It's got to be fire and theft. So the geezer says, leave it out. He's got to nick a car that's on fire. <laughs> Oh, hello. Uh, what seems to be the trouble? It's my shoulder, Doctor. I have terrible pains in my shoulder. Hmm. Well, perhaps a massage would be a good idea. Should we start now? Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> oh! Oh! oh. Uh, but, Doctor, these aren't my shoulders. That's all right. I'm not a doctor. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. That sketch was not too bad. Yeah. Bad? <laughs> I thought it was great. Hello. And now it's history of comedy time. As you know, this is the part of the show where we talk about some of the great comics of all time. This week, one of my all-time favorites, Lenny Bennett. <laughs> they were really fab. Take a look at this clip. Wasn't that great? Of course, there have been people who've tried to copy Keaton, like the late, great Irish comedian, Barney Shamrock. Over to you, Barney. <laughs> oh, Michael, you are the pips. <laughs> we were pips. I know Tarzan's already been done by Miss Derrick or as we call her, B.O. <laughs> but I'm always ready for a remake. Like I always say, if you do it and it's great, why not do it again? And again? <laughs> Love is lovelier the seventh time around. <laughs> anyway, our film is called Tarzan's Last Stand. And I'm so glad I'm on it. It's a biggie. <laughs> I play Jane. Surprise, surprise. And Tarzan and I are being chased by a tribe of headhunters, and I'm not ready to give my head to anyone. And Tarzan, who's played by Dudley Moore, oh, and by the way, he only had a stuntman for the standing scenes. <laughs> Tarzan and I are trapped in our treehouse, and the headhunters have got us surrounded, and Tarzan refuses to come out of the closet. But finally he does, and falls in love with one of the headhunters. <laughs> but I'm giving away the plot. Anyway, go and see it. You'll love it. It's all done in the best possible time. <laughs> hey, hey. Was that, was that Michael Parkinson there? No, it was a cardboard cutter. I know he is. But what's he doing on this show? Nothing. Oh, good. He hasn't changed then. <laughs> More laughs when Night Flight returns after this. Welcome back to Insanity, courtesy of Kenny Everett. And now it's guest star time. And this week, it's a great singer. I suppose the greatest measure of success in this wonderful world of showbiz is to be known by just one name. Garbo, Brando, Monroe. And here's a girl who has achieved that measure of success. That's why she's known simply as Toya. Wilcox. <laughs> Tell me, Miss Wilcox, what exactly is it uh, that you do? Well, I sing. Mm hmm And I act. Yes. And I dye my hair. My God. <laughs> How did you do that? Do what? Well, your hair, it 
keeps changing colour. Oh, really? What colour is it now? Well, it's sort of green, blue, blue, about red. Ah, oh, well, that means it's Tuesday. <laughs> My God. How did you know that? How embarrassing. <laughs> It's not here. Well, what can I say? I've been doing a little intercontinental flying about of late, and recently, whilst in New York, yes, I was in the Big Apple. Actually, I was definitely Magus Convention, of which I am the founder member. Anyway, no, I don't break. When I was leaving the aforementioned Big Apple, I was about to get on a plane when a stewardess said I couldn't take the dog in a cabin with me. She said the dog has to go in the old. I said, don't be stupid, darling. You can't put a dog in the old. He'll freeze to death. Well, she wouldn't have it. She said the dog has to go in the old. So she put it in the old. And of course, I was right. The dog froze to death. But what I thought was interesting was the way she broke the news to me. I was sitting relaxing in my seat, and a stewardess came up and said, would you like a drink, sir? I said, certainly, I'll have a scotch with ice. She said, I'm afraid we're all out of ice, sir. Do you mind if I chip some off your dog? <laughs> <laughs> you must believe me, Geoffrey. I'm, I'm really sorry about all this. You're sorry? Well, how do you think I feel? We've been married now for 12 years, and not once did I ever think there'd be another man. And him. <laughs> all people. What do you mean, me of all people? Why don't you just stay out of this for a minute? Well, it was your idea. I came here in the first place. And I think that was right. We should be here, the three of us, face to face, so that you can see what you're breaking up. Well, it's all down to me, then, is it? Well, we have been married for 12 years until you came along. Oh, Geoffrey, I'm so sorry. It must be hell for you. But there's no turning back. The decision has been made. <laughs> Join us, we have a trumpet by the clown. There's 
tasty things to try Like a groovy sausage dip All we want to do is please you With our shakes and with our whips If you're looking for a quick one You can get yours here today And the wife can have some BK To eat here or take away If you really like the big ones Come and pick up one or two They're just waiting on the counter And we love to service you There's a tidbit at my burgers You'll enjoy Oh, not that again <laughs> All right Two words <laughs> First word Two syllables First syllable. Four. Four. Second syllable. Yes. Putting lipstick on. No. What's that? Drink. Coffee. Tea. Forty. Right. First word. Forty. Second word. Yeah. Mascara. Eyelids. Balls. Lashes. Forty lashes. Oh, I get it. Forty lashes. Yeah. <laughs> All the pain. <laughs> All the agony. <laughs> I love this sketch. <laughs> and uh, more of the fantastic Toya, uh, Wilcox. <laughs> and this is going to be really embarrassing. first time she sang it, but she's improved tremendously over the last minutes. Hello, this commercial time. I like its style, coverage, good coverage of sport, and it really tells you what's happening in the arts. Oh, um, I like its in-depth analysis of the political scene, and above all, it doesn't insult my intelligence. It's a newspaper that understands women. It's a paper that doesn't take sides, but you know, it has its own point of view. I like the humour, I like the reviews, but most of all, for me, it's page three in the tits. <laughs> Hello, creeps, listen to this. There's these two farmers, real thick hours, you know what I mean? Any anyway, right that. One says to the other, I've got a cow that I ain't giving no milk, what should I do? The other farmer says, funny you should say that, because I had a cow once who wasn't giving any milk, and what I did was to give her some paraffin to drink. So the first farmer goes away, gives his cow paraffin to drink, and comes back the next day and says, listen, I gave the cow paraffin to drink, and the cow died. The other farmer says, yeah, so did mine. <laughs> you know, this plant's got green flies. And they're open. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Exhausty poo. I bet you don't think, I bet you don't think that I go through a lot of agony to do this show. I bet you think it's like falling off to be examined from every angle. <laughs> The agony of looking at naked women all day. I think auditions are stupid. I mean, for instance, I'm not even in next week's show. I failed the audition. <laughs> By the way, if you have trouble following the logic of all this audition shtick, it'll all be explained in the next item. Excuse me. Hello? Hello? Are these the auditions? That's right, miss. Uh, you're next. That's right, I'm next. Mr. Piano Player, please. Let's pull the whole thing off. B flat. And I'll, you say either, I say either, you say neither, I say neither, 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 neither. Let's call the whole thing off. You say potato, I say potato, you say tomato, I say tomato, potato, tomato, tomato, potato. Let's call the whole thing off. But all That'll be quite enough. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Levine. That's Levine. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to another edition of Guess the 
Celebrity. Yes, the game where a guest celebrity appears in silhouette behind that screen. And you at home have to try and guess who it is. <laughs> the clues are there if you look for them. Look at that hump. Look at that mime. Our phones are open now. Let's have your guesses. Yes, you're absolutely right. It's Terry Wogan! <laughs> I'm standing here with Vincent Van Gogh. Now tell me, Vincent, it must be terrible going through life with only the one year. <laughs> I'm standing here with Vincent Van Gogh. Now, tell me, Vincent, it must be terrible going through life with only the one year. I wouldn't say that. You don't have to. I, I just said it. Did you? I didn't hear you. I've only got one ear, you know. Very good Lord. It must be terrible going through life with only the one year. I don't know. It has its compensations. How do you mean? Well, I got my stereo half price. Oh, you've got one there. No, I got one ear. <laughs> Good old days. What? It says here in the Radio Times that this program is the good old days. Let's see that. Ah, it's 1951. <laughs> is it? No, this Radio Times is from 1951. Oh, well, anyway, let's watch it. I like the good old days. Yes, so do I. <laughs> um, um, did the earth move for you, darling? <laughs> well, so so. Well, let's try again. Okay. Night Flight will be right back before the dust can settle. We would like to welcome to our congregation today a distinguished visitor, the head of the riot air from the BBC. And I would just like to add that I got music, I got Rick Hill, the <laughs> My girl hooked us for anything more. I got daisies in green pastures. I got my girl hooked us for anything more. Hello, my little silicon chips. It is me, the overwhelming Marcel. <laughs> but do not worry. I am not going to touch your little brains with some brilliant new stories that you need to think about. Just relax, and I will tell you a very old joke. They're so much more easy to digest. You will know it. You will know where to laugh. I will know where to stop. 
We work as a team. It's better that way, as the actress said to the bishop. <laughs> but that's another story. And come to think of it, it's better than this one. <laughs> Any road up, here is the joke. This fellow was engaged to a beautiful Eskimo girl. Well, she said she was beautiful. Who knows under all that fur? Anyway, they were in Alaska, engaged in the igloo, and extremely cold, when suddenly she broke it off. <laughs> well, that's the end of the show for another week. And what a great show it's been. Let's now take time to look at some of the great bits from tonight's show. And here they are. <laughs> yes, that's what showbiz is all about. The man on the high wire risking his life. The clown with his drawers falling down. The magician baffling you with his sleight of hand. People who've spent years learning their craft just to entertain you. And little do they know, they've been totally wasting their time. Because all you really want is Thelma and Ruby, the bouncing boobs. Good night, everybody. <laughs>